Reactants, products, how do we balance a chemical equation? Hello, Soy Pals! I am Ma'am Josephine Padua, your science teacher for today. In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we are going to discuss balancing of a chemical equation. We will relate the law of conservation of mass in balancing a chemical equation. We will also present its guidelines and demonstrate its step-by-step -step procedures. Finally, we will appreciate the importance of writing a balanced chemical equation. In the next few minutes, we will explore science for another ah moment. Chemical equation is used to illustrate a chemical reaction using symbols, formulas, and signs. It is the chemist's shorthand for describing the sequence of a chemical reaction. When we write chemical equation, we take note of the following. First, chemical formulas of the element symbols are used instead of names. Second, it consists reactants, which are written on the left side of the equation, and products, which are written on the right side. Third, in between the two reactants, the plus sign is used in place of the word AND. Fourth, to separate the reactants and products, an arrow is placed in between them. The tip of an arrow indicates the direction of the reaction, and this represents the word produce, yield, or form. Fifth, there should be the same atoms on the reactant and the product side of the equation. These are the symbols that can be used in writing a chemical equation. Ah! This chemical equation can be read as the reaction between hydrogen gas and oxygen gas will yield water. To obey the law of conservation of mass, there must be the same number of each atom on each side of a correct chemical equation. When we have the same number of each atom on side of the equation, we say that the chemical equation is balanced. Remember, an equation is not correct until it is balanced. Equation can be balanced by inspection, a trial and error process, which is simply putting coefficient before any of the formulas until there is the same number of each atom on both sides of the equation. But what are coefficient? Correct! Coefficient are the whole numbers written in front of the symbols or formulas which represent the number of each atom. Ah! In dealing with coefficients, the subscript of compounds are fixed, meaning they should never be changed. Change only the coefficients. The coefficients of things should be whole numbers expressed in their lowest term. The coefficient multiplies every subscript in the formula. If no subscript were seen, it means that the formula has a subscript 1. In our example, two hydrogen atoms are present on the reactant side and on the product side. However, there are two oxygen atoms in the reactant side and only one oxygen atom in the product side. The coefficient 2 is placed in front of chemical formula of water. This balances the number of oxygen atoms in both sides. However, the number of hydrogen atoms on the product side became 4. Adding coefficient 2 on the hydrogen atoms on the reactant side 
we'll balance them. We have just shown the way of balancing a chemical equation. Ah! Here are some guidelines that will help you in balancing chemical equation. Take note of the first and most important rule is that the formulas are never changed in balancing equation. First, determine the correct formulas for all the reactants and products in the reaction. Count the number of atoms of each element in the reactants and products. Second, find out which atoms are unbalanced. Balance each element at a time by placing a coefficient before its symbol or formula. Third, most gaseous elements such as hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are diatomic molecules. They exist in free uncombined state and should be written in the equation as Fourth, if there are many elements or atoms to be balanced, balance the hydrogen and oxygen last. Look at the compound on either side of the equation that appears to have greatest number of atoms of an element other than hydrogen and oxygen. Fifth, the group of atoms acting as a unit like polyatomic ions appearing intact on both sides of the equation should balance themselves as self-contained groups. The elements in the group should not be separated from other elements in the same group. Sixth, between hydrogen and oxygen, balance first the one that is present in the fewer number of compounds first. Seventh, changing the coefficient of the monoatomic element will not affect the balance of the other elements, so it can be adjusted lastly. Finally, check each atom of the elements if it is already balanced. The final balance equation should have coefficients in the lowest possible whole number ratio. As you can see, the guidelines are numerous for you as a beginner in balancing chemical equation. But when you are already used to it, the rules to balance a chemical equation is as simple as it is. Step 1. Write a chemical equation with correct symbols and formulas. Step 2. Count the number of atoms of each element on each side of the arrow. Step 3. Balance the atoms by using coefficients. Step 4. Check your work by counting the atoms of each element. Ah! Disciples, please get a paper and pen and let us try balancing this equation. Aluminum reacts with chlorine gas and chilled aluminum chloride. Step 1. Write the chemical equation with correct symbols and formulas. What is the symbol of aluminum? Right, the symbol is Al. What about chlorine? Correct, the symbol is Cl. Since it is a diatomic element, chlorine has a subscript of 2. What is the chemical formula for aluminum chloride? You got it! Aluminum chloride has a formula of AlCl3. With this information, the chemical equation is written as... Step 2. Let us now count the number of atoms of each element on each side of the arrow. The elements at the left side of the arrow are the reactants, and at the right side of the arrow are the products. The reactants and products should have the same elements. In the reactant side, there is one aluminum atom and two chlorine atoms. In the product side, there is one aluminum atom and three chlorine atoms. As we can see, the number of chlorine atoms is unbalanced. Therefore, the chemical equation is unbalanced too. Step 3. By inspection method, coefficients are written on both sides to balance the equation. 
Let us put a coefficient 3 in front of chlorine on the reactant side so it becomes 6. Why is this so? Following the rule, the number of atoms of the element is equal to the coefficient multiplied by each subscript. If so, how can we make the number of atoms of chlorine also 6 in the product? Correct! By adding coefficient 2 in front of aluminum chloride, the atoms of chlorine are now 6. Step 4. Check your work by counting the atoms of elements in the reactant and in the product side. As we can see, the number of aluminum atoms is unbalanced. We add coefficient 2 on the reactant side so that the number of aluminum atoms on both sides becomes equal. Finally, we have the balanced chemical equation. Ah! For our second example, let us try to balance this. Chlorine and sodium bromide reacts and yield sodium chloride and bromine. Step 1. Write the chemical equation with correct symbols and formulas. Our chemical equation is written as Step 2. In the reactant side, there are two chlorine atoms and one molecule of sodium bromide. In the product side, there are one molecule of sodium chloride and two bromine atoms. As we can see, the number of chlorine and bromine atoms are unbalanced. Therefore, the chemical equation is unbalanced too. Step 3. Let us put a coefficient 2 in front of sodium bromide molecule on the reactant side. In the product side, we will also add coefficient 2 in front of sodium chloride. Step 4. Check your work by counting the atoms of elements in the reactant and in the product side. Finally, we have the balanced chemical equation. Ah! Now, Balance this chemical equation at your own. Be patient in balancing the equation. Remember, practice makes perfect. A sulfuric acid solution is mixed with an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide to form water and an aqueous solution of sodium sulfate. Step 1 is done for you. Good luck, Saipals! Ah! Balancing chemical equation is an important guiding principle in science. A balanced chemical equation allows us to predict the amount of reactants needed and the amount of products formed. It helps us save resources whenever we perform specific experiments. Ah! In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we discuss balancing of a chemical equation. We learned that a chemical equation is used to illustrate a chemical reaction using symbols, formulas, and signs. It is a shorthand for describing the sequence of chemical reactions. To write chemical equation, there are some steps to be followed. We also learned that balancing chemical equations obeys the law of conservation of mass. There must be the same number of each atom on each side of a correct chemical equation. When we have the same number of each atom on each side of the equation, we can say that the chemical equation is balanced. Balancing chemical equation is an important guiding principle in science. A balanced chemical equation allows us to predict the amount of reactants needed and the amount of products formed. It helps us save resources whenever we perform specific experiments. Ah! That's all for today, Saipals. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you again next week for another Ah Moment, only here in Agham Alam Hub, Palajan's SciTech Portal. Bye!